today is Saturday, March 11th, and I am going to make a short video about the upcoming Fed meeting. I'm going to use the Fed watch tool to go over some numbers in lieu of what's going on, the exciting news with SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. Okay, so let me expand this. As we can see, and this is from the um, CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group's website. This is the CME Fed Watch tool. So it basically gives you information about when the meetings are and what is likely or unlikely to happen. As we can see here, the next FOMC meeting is in according to the countdown clock. 11 days, 42 minutes, and 30 seconds. 11 days. So it's going to be on Wednesday, not this week, but the following week, 11 days away. Let's scroll down and take a quick look at the following. All right, we can see, I don't want this. What is that? Why is that coming up? I want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. Get out. Okay, there we go. All right, we can see that these tabs correspond to meeting dates. And as previously previously mentioned, the next meeting is in 11 days, which is the 22nd of March. Here's basic information for um, the meeting date. We have the contract, which is ZQH3. This expires at the end of this month. And let's take a quick look at what this chart tells us. All right, so we have odds here. The current target rate is four and a half to four and three quarters. Four in the Otis, as they used to say on the floor, the Otis, the Otis. So the chance of a hike with the rates ending up between four in the Otis and five is 31.7%. And the odds of rates going um, to five, five and a quarter, is at 68.3%, and that's also reflected down here. Now, 31.7, and you subtract that from 100, you get 68.3 for a five, five and a quarter. All right, let's take a quick look at what has changed over the course of a week. So, from March the 3rd to March the 10th, the odds of rates ending up between four in the orders and five went down. As you can see here on March the 3rd, they were at roughly 71.6% and now uh, it's gone It's gone down, the probability has gone down. And a month ago, it was highly likely that the rates were gonna be between four in the orders and five. We can see that since a month ago, the rates are projected to go even higher and it's going to end up at five five and a quarter if we scroll back up a bit and we do the compare hit the compare tab we're going to come up with basically the same picture this bar represents uh february a month ago a week ago uh, a day ago and the current so the odds of rates being in this region have gone down and the odds of rates being five to five and a quarter have the probabilities, let me say the probabilities have gone up. So it's basically a, a different look at the same information and let me click the probabilities tab and this is the same news. We, I'm gonna highlight this area, the meeting date of March the 22nd. Uh, uh, probabilities of five to five and a quarter, 68.3, and then the difference um, add up 31.7, you get 100%. So these are the odds of rates going from four in the orders to five. So this is basically in poker language, uh, roughly an over pair for five and five, uh, five to five and a quarter versus a naked, let's just call it a, a naked flush draw. So you might have pocket kings here versus a uh, 9-8 flush draw, naked flush draw. All right. 
Why am I bringing any of this up? Why does it matter? Because what recently happened, um, by recently I mean just the last couple of trading days, there's been news about a bank failure and SVB, if I remember what I read correctly, is about the 16th, 15th, 16th largest bank in the country and there was a run on the bank. Uh, how does that affect the markets? Well, this is basically giving you a big clue how it's affecting the markets uh, as far as the meeting on the 22nd is concerned, the FOMC meeting that is. Let's take a look at the meeting that's scheduled for May the 3rd. Well, we see that rates are likely to continue to go higher. So assuming that they're here um, after the, this meeting, that's the upcoming meeting, they are projected to go even higher. And the probabilities of that happening stand at 56.6%. Now, let's say that the SVB problem ends up being worse than people think and then the Fed and the Fed governors have to have a lot of champagne over a nervously held meeting. I don't know if they actually get nervous about much, but anyway, uh, let's assume that they have to have um, some sort of emergency meeting and they're drinking their champagne from crystal glasses and they say, hey, you know what? This problem is bigger than we expect, expected and anticipated. So that might lead them to back off on rate increases. And if that ends up being the case, that will be reflected in this number. So you will see the probabilities of this go down, the probabilities of this go down quite a bit. And what does that lead to? Most likely a stock market rally. I am not saying that the market is going to rally. I'm speaking hypothetically. It might happen, but personally, I will keep an eye on this. I'm not going to look at it every hour, but uh, maybe once or twice a week. And if I see something, um, I don't want to say unusual, but let's say I see a, a market rally that tends to catch people by surprise, I would expect that this number would be much lower uh, in conjunction with a market rally. Let's take a quick peek and see what's expected for the June 14th meeting. Okay, so here we go. So still, in spite of everything that's happened over the last few days, rates are projected to continue to increase through June and yeah. So, so far we're not getting any, any indication from the Fed funds market that the Federal Reserve is gonna back off on their tightening cycle. So no QE yet and who knows when it will begin, but those numbers, when it does begin, it will be reflected in these numbers. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope that was helpful. Have a nice weekend.